Red Skelton Show with Red guest star Vivian Vance with Anthony Caruso. Now, here he is, the star of our show, Red Skelton. Much, ladies and gentlemen, it's always always a pleasure to visit with you. Just even though it is just a half hour, but uh, tonight, as you know, is the World Series and uh, uh, the time of the World Series. So we'd like to have a moment of silence for the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't figure out what happened to the to the, the Los Angeles Dodgers. They were great until the season started. <laughs> Everybody had alibis for the, for the Dodgers this year. Some of them says it was the screen in the left field at the Coliseum. Others says it was the smog. And, uh, but I, I, I really know what was wrong. They, they played lousy. <laughs> hey, I, got, I got a little boy story. A little boy story. A little kid, they're playing ball. And this little kid, he's the umpire. He says, ball one, ball two. Ball three, ball four, you out. <laughs> he said, what do you mean I'm out? He said, the base is loaded. I got no place to put you. <laughs> you, <coughs> See, you can't send off for him. You got to have him fitted. <laughs> Somebody drop something back there. You know, we've, uh, we've sort of introduced baseball to a lot of countries. Like Japan, we, we taught them baseball. And even the, the cannibals in Barneo are playing baseball now. The only trouble is... <laughs> when you try to run by the shortstop, he eats you. <laughs> you know, Russia should be great at baseball. They should play baseball over there. <laughs> They're good at throwing curves. <laughs> And they're always calling strikes. <laughs> and, and they're sensational when it comes to stealing bases. <laughs> you know, I understand that, uh, that they're going to use girls in the major leagues next year. Can you imagine somebody like Marilyn Monroe in playing night baseball? All the guys want to play night ball games. <laughs> With no light. <laughs> I can just hear the coach say, all right, to the showers. And everybody goes. <laughs> Hey, I have, I have a little pantomime scene that I would like to do for you that has to do with, uh, with uh, baseball. And it, it, it has the little, little boy, Chief, and, and, and the little old man. Stop 
running off at the mouth. If I'd wanted a conversationalist, I'd have married Carl Sandburg. Well, you'd have made a nice pair. You're both about the same age. <laughs> oh, that's very funny. What have you got in your hand, dear? Nothing. Well, you have now hot coffee. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. <laughs> yeah, boy, what a day, what a day, what a day. First I have a, 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 a barbecued thumb, now I got a, a boiled hand. <laughs> oh, shut up, Bob, I'm having my dinner, hmm? Oh. I'll listen to the baseball game. Oh, I wonder if this is what they call togetherness. <laughs> Be quiet, I want to hear how the Dodgers do. I can tell you. It's the fourth inning, and they're winning, three to one. Oh, be quiet. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's the fourth inning, and the Dodgers are winning, three to one. <laughs> George, you just said that. No, I know. It's going to be four to one when Duke Snyder hits the ball and knocks a 400-foot home run right over the right field fence. There it goes. Going, going, gone. Duke's done it again, 400 feet over the right field fence. <laughs> How did you know that? Oh, I can call all the plays. Oh, yeah. you just made a lucky guess, that's all. No, no. Be still now, so I can listen to me. You don't have to, sweet. I can tell you what, what's going what's to happen. Don Drysdale is going to uh, come up to bat, and he's going to get hit in the left elbow. Here's the wind-up. It's an inside curve. Uh-oh, the ball just hit Don Drysdale on the right elbow. <laughs> Well, know it all. You said the left elbow. Uh, correction, ladies and gentlemen. It wasn't his right elbow. It was his left elbow. Ah! <laughs> George, you heard the game earlier. This must be a rebroadcast. It's the top of the fourth inning, ladies and gentlemen, and we're bringing this game to you direct from Chicago. Live? Live. <laughs> we're going to hear some more of this. Not today, sweetie. The game's going to be called on account of rain. Says who? Says me. Uh-oh, it's just started to rain. Says him. <laughs> Gentlemen, here's that rain that's been threatening all day. Let's see if the umpires will call the game. They will. They won't. They will. They won't. They just did. George, <laughs> how did you know what was going to happen? Oh, it's easy. I, I dreamed about the game last night. You see the entire baseball game the night before it happened? Yes, yes. Every single play, every single play they make. And I see it in my dreams real nice, too, because... I, I, it's clear. It's clear. I sleep with my glasses on. I don't believe it. Right. Now, you can go to bed right now, right now, and dream about tomorrow's game. Hmm? All right. First, I'll get something to drink out of the ice bar. Oh, no. <laughs> Boy, that Betty Furness sure gets around. the light and I see in those hair curlers and I get scared. You look like a moose with a home permit. <laughs> One more insult like that and I'm going to go home to mother. Would you? <laughs> I could just think of one. I had a good one this morning. <laughs> I should write those things down. Come on now. Kiss me good night. Let's go to sleep. You mean just offhand? Just... Come on, come on. Okay. Kiss me good night. <laughs> you know you ought to put some cold cream on your lips again, just like shoe leather. <laughs> Into that way now. The fun part. <laughs> well, if it wasn't for that lousy censor, would we have fun? Charlie Neal is up at bat. 
It's a double to the right field wall. Wasn't the radio. It looks like Neil will try to steal third. No, I think he... <laughs> yes, it's a wild throw, and Neil is safe on third. Come on, George. Come on. What's happening now? Well, Gil Hodges is up to bat. He has two strikes on him, and, uh... Come on, come on. What's happening? Oh, who cares? <laughs> oh, a beautiful blonde just moved in my room. Oh, please. Uh, she's sitting on my lap. <laughs> Come on, well, Hodges get the first base. No, but I think I will. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'll give you five to one on Rainbow in the fifth. All right? It's that bad. Hello. You want to make a hundred dollar bet on the Cubs against the Dodgers? All right, you got a bet. See who that is. Hey, it's a strange thing. Maybe it's one of them dames from the police department. <laughs> Bonsoir, Mademoiselle. Welcome to Francois's Saloon. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you. I want to talk to Lucky. Uh, Lucky, uh, I'm Lucky Francois, and what can I do for you? I was told I could find a bookmaker here. Bookmaker? Oh, no. We have Rembrandt's, we have the Binkies, and we have uh, the studio. But we just sold our last bookmaker. Oh, I'm not talking about painting. I want to make a bet on a baseball game. Lady, I think you came to the wrong place. That's funny. Sam the Butcher told me that your art gallery was a bookie joint. Oh, Sam the Butcher sent you? Yes. <laughs> Why didn't you say that in the first place? Well, I don't know. <laughs> oh, ladies, pick your team. I want to bet on the cup. Oh, uh, win or lose? Win, and I want to bet on every inning. Every inning? Yes, and I want to bet on every play and each man who comes up to bat. <laughs> I think we've got a live one. You know it. <laughs> All right, ladies. Frank Howard is at bat, waiting for that first pitch. I'll bet ten dollars that he pops out to the shortstop. I'll give you ten to one on that bet. Okay. Here comes the pitch. Howard swings. It's a pop-up. And the shortstop catches it for the out. <laughs> The Dodgers are one run behind. The bases are loaded and Charlie Neal is at bat. I'll bet uh, $500 that he hits into a double play, second to first. And here's the pitch. Neal swings at the ball. It's a grounder to the second baseman. He steps on second, throws it to first. It's a double play and the game is over. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. Oh, thank you for all that lovely money. I'll be back tomorrow to pick up some more. And if I may suggest it, why don't you change your name to Unlucky Francois? You know something? I ain't never seen nothing like that before. Me neither. And you know something? We'd have been better off if she'd turn out to be one of them lady cops. We'd have saved all that dough. Ah. <laughs> Glad you called. Just wait till you hear the news. I have a complete new outfit. Five cashmere sweaters and a full-length mink coat. And that's just the beginning. We're going to have a big home with a swimming pool and a yacht at... 
No, Mother, of course not. I didn't shoot George and collect the insurance. <laughs> no, my husband is a genius. Not only that, but he's the sweetest, most considerate, most lovable man on the face of this earth. Well, I'm in the wrong house. <laughs> Here, you stupid idiot. No. I'm home, all right. <laughs> oh, kiss me, you great, big, beautiful doll. Well, I must be in the wrong house. <laughs> be nice and comfy. Take your paper, even though you can't read. Yeah. <laughs> George? Yeah. George? You didn't say anything about my new coat. Is that what it is? I thought you forgot to shave. <laughs> You are so cute, honey. I'll go get your pajamas ready so you can go to bed and dream about the baseball game, huh? What's with her in that baseball game all of a sudden? Oh, well. <laughs> What'd she do, buy a canary? <laughs> For days. <laughs> okay, stop it. Uh, uh, George? George, come on to bed. I tell you, Mr. Lucky, I always dream about the games the night before, and it always comes out true. Okay, Fusher, I'm going to give you a chance to prove it. Now close your eyes and start dreaming. Okay. I can't dream unless I'm in my own bed. All right, Sleeping Beauty, let's go find your bed. Oh, here, here, here. <laughs> You're making it very hard for me to find. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right, that's my wife. <laughs> that's your wife? Yes. Yeah. Man, I didn't know how lucky I was. <laughs> Get your pajamas on. All she wants me to do is to sleep. You know, for Christmas, I think she's going to get me a teetsy fly. <laughs> Hurry up. There you go. Quick. Hey, lady. <laughs> didn't we meet just about $10,000 ago? Oh, yes. You're the nice man who gave me all that lovely money. And I'm going to get all that money back with that husband of yours and his screwy dreams. Oh, now, wait a minute. If you know how the games are going to turn out, who will I bet with? You help me get that sucker to sleep. And I'll find plenty of suckers to bet with. Hey, we can make our own syndicate and make a million. Oh, that sounds great. But promise now, not a word about this to Elliot Ness. No. <laughs> no, he's liable to blow his stack. <laughs> his stack, get it? <laughs> oh, boy, was that untouchable. <laughs> Was that untouchable? That's all. Come on, honey, hurry up. Hop into bed. Oh, hop into bed. All right. <laughs> he said, hop. <laughs> Come on now. Lay back and go right to sleep. Right to sleep. Careful how you handle me. The zipper didn't work. <laughs> in time. You got any, any sleeping pills? I can't go to sleep. I'm not sleeping. You're not sleeping? No. I'll give you one of those sleeping pills. Here I just said that. Come on. <laughs> Here you are. Sleeping pill? Yes. May I have my water? We haven't got time for water. Huh? <laughs> hey, I had his shoes on. Well, now, do you feel sleepy? No. <laughs> Give me those pills. I'll put this bun to sleep.
drafty. <laughs> I feel why <laughs> 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 Never mind the formalities. Here. Oh, oh, my. Take it down. Come on. 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 Come Tell us what you dreamt, man. Oh, I think he's trying to say something. Come uh, on, come on. What do you predict? I predict that, uh, 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 <laughs> I predict that the, the, the game's going to be called on account of a snowstorm. George, a snowstorm in Los Angeles in October? This guy is nuts. I'll bet you a thousand to one there's no snow. to you by Johnson's Wax, who also bring you the Zane Great... <laughs> the Zane Great Theater on Thursday. And we'd like to thank our new neighbors, the Canadian CBC, for joining us and having us on their network. And next week, we'll be brought to you by all of the sponsors, the makers of Pet Milk. So until then, have fun, stay happy, and, and be seeing you. Goodbye now. This is our Gilmore speaking.